Yes, I'm from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I have four Shirazis. No, I have three Syrahs and one Shiraz in front of me, uh, all from South Africa. Uh, one's labelled Shiraz, the other three are labelled Syrah. Is this indicative of uh, the mindset of the people who made them, or is it a marketing thing, or...? Only one way to find out. I've got them organised in uh, vintage order, uh, so we're going from a 2012 and we're finishing up with a 2007. Uh, most of them from Stellenbosch. Uh, maybe I'll just tell you what they are as we get to them. All about 14, 14.5% alcohol. First one is The Liberator, and it's called The Francophile, so obviously French uh, influence, and it's got a picture of a, a red, white and blue... Or is it red, white and blue for France? Or is it red, white and blue because the guy who behind it is an Englishman? Uh, anyway, this is the Liberator, the Francophile from Stellenbosch, 2012 vintage. Let's give this one a whirl. Well, this smells like young, crunchy, um, almost like a winery at vintage time. It's got that juicy vibrancy about it. Also got um, a character that uh, Syrah can be prone to if you don't give it enough air. Little touch of uh, reduction. Um, so the way I describe reduction, um, in, in, in you, the way you come across it in drinks, is if you get a can of beer and you open it and get that, tss, that plume of gas, uh, and it's got, sometimes got that slightly rubbery smell, that is uh, an indication of, of reduction. And it's the wine has been made um, without too much oxygen getting in there. Uh, but this smells young, crunchy, uh, dark fruit, uh, so berries, uh, spice, and none of that South African bake, which uh, is promising. That was a really joyful, young, fresh, vibrant, punchy style. Um, lots of uh, lots of flesh, uh, but un I don't know if they've, if they've put it anywhere near an oak barrel. It's got a picture of a barrel on, on the back, but um, I don't notice anything... Uh, overtly oaky. They just let the fruit shine and uh, and shine it is doing and um, in um, a very impressive fashion actually. I, I do like that. I really do like that. Um, and the thing about reduction um, is if you get it, if, if it goes too much, um, if there's too much of it in a wine then the wine ends up, uh, it, it can go into that slightly eggy character if there's just the right amount. It adds an almost like a savoury, smoky character to it, and that's what the reduction's doing here. Uh, it's also keeping it fresh. So uh, this is 2012. I think if you were to pour a glass of that out, and leave it a couple of days even, uh, the fruit flavours would still be young, vibrant and uh, energetic. And uh, if you wanted to keep a bottle for a couple of years or more, uh, that again, that will keep, keep it in fine fettle. Uh, but uh, really nice stuff. Let's see how we get on with wine number two, which is Higo Vale Heights uh, at Shiraz, uh, Western Cape. Uh, so this is the only Western Cape one. The other three are all Stellenbosch. Uh, and this is 2011 vintage. Let's give it a whirl. Well, it's a year older, um, and a couple of things I noticed. Uh, one of them is that there's a, more, there's a toasty character here, um, uh, which I associate uh, with a couple of things. One of them is uh, that it's got a little bit of, um, a bit more oak. Uh, influence there. The other thing is, I don't know whether they they there are other grapes in here. I don't know whether they've put a little bit of uh, pinotage in there, um, uh, but there is there is certainly more of a South African accent with that one. The first one definitely was speaking uh, a little bit more French than this one. Um, does that make it better or does that make it different? Let's taste it and see. Feels just a little bit more controlled. Uh, than the uh, the Liberator. The Liberator is just like lovely, open, young, unsolid. Here, you can taste more of the processes. So you can um, the oak tannins uh, come through when you when you come to taste it. Um, it's it's only half a degree difference in alcohol, but I notice a little bit more alcohol burn, maybe less freshness of fruit, um, and um, yeah, it's it's it's. Um, it's a slightly more manufactured wine. The Liberator does feel like it is, it is more liberated um, and uh, lives up to its name. Let's try wine number three. Uh, so Jordan, the Prospector, uh, Shir uh, Syrah, uh, 2009. Interesting that that was the one that was labelled Shiraz. We've got a Syrah. Um, the other three are all labelled Syrah. Now, I was talking about oak influence on the, um, uh, the Higavale Heights. Here, I noticed the oak influence... Uh, but it feels almost like a, um, if the uh, oak used on the Higavale Heights uh, was a, a bit, um, clunk is the wrong word, but it, it felt a bit conventional. Here it almost feels like it's been used 
uh, in Burgundian fashion and someone here understands the art of élevage, uh, which is not just plonking a wine into a barrel to give it oak flavour, but uh, to put it in there and uh, to soften it in the right way. It's added like a, a it feels, feels like it's going to have a, like a, a nutty, creamy character alongside the, um, uh, the fruit. Fruit-wise, um, it's not as fresh as the Liberator, but then it's um, three years older. Uh, so you're getting a rounder, warmer, uh, still the berries, still the plums, uh, but a uh, little more evolved. Better? Different? Let's see. Yeah, rounded, creamy, and you, you, you almost feel... Um, uh, yeah, it, it feels as almost as if someone's plonked a little bit of cream in there. There is this juicy um, texture to it, and the fruit... The fruit is almost like hovering there, but it's in the background, and it's it's as much at the moment the texture and uh, richness and roundness of the wine that's uh, carrying it. Soft, appealing. Um, I personally prefer the young, crunchy style of the Liberator, but um, they've done this extremely well, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised. It's, it's, it's it comes with the Stelvin, so they, they, the wines often need a little bit of time to uh, uh, come out of their shell. I wouldn't be surprised if the fruit flavours uh, emerge with time. I'm taking both these bottles up to uh, show a few people uh, uh, later on this evening, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see how how and how they've come out of their shell. But I'm going to have another slug of this. Again, there is that South African... Um, I call it the South African bake in the background. Um, it's not um, in, in the way that uh, Australia has... Um, can have mint and eucalyptus or mint stroke eucalyptus characters in some of its wine. If it's in the background then it adds to the wine or it adds something to the wine. If it's centre stage then it takes over. Here I think they've, they've got it just in, in the right proportion. It's not uh, it's not too dominant and um, tasty. Still think, think I prefer the Liberator. Let's see how we get on with the final one. The Foundry Syrah 2007 again from Stellenbosch. By currants, herbs, berries, plums. Um, it's funny, it smells, uh, if anything, fresher, or fr fruit-wise, uh, than the Jordan. Not that the Jordan didn't taste uh, old in, in, in any respect, but this, this, the, 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 the fruit here still feels young and uh, bo boisterous, Not is maybe the wrong word, but it still feels like it's got a little bit of uh, uh, fight left in it. And the fruit's still got lots of life, lots of lots of time ahead of it for uh, those who want to, who like their, their 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 wines to go old and leathery. It's not remotely leathery yet. It's um, maybe it's lost its youthful freshness, and the fruit's going into that slightly cooked fruit uh, fruit pastel uh, character. Really well made, uh, oak handling done nicely. Uh, if I have a criticism of it, it's maybe. I don't see much of uh, a place coming through there. Uh, I, 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 I taste uh, uh, fully well-ripened grapes and good handling of the fruit, but um, nothing that really says this comes from a very interesting place. Um, and uh, I'm very willing to uh, watch, uh, uh, to be proved wrong. As I say, I'm, I'm tasting uh, some of these wines later with uh, with some people, and I'd love to see that come out of its shell and reveal li life beyond fruit. As it is at the moment, um, I like the Liberator, even though I was talking about how lovely that and vibrant and fruity that was. Um, I, I, it may be a bit, a bit fascinating to see uh, um, what, um, what terroir-related uh, uh, characteristics uh, emerge, if any. Uh, if they don't, I've still enjoyed the tasting. The Liberator's my favourite so far, uh, and then a toss-up between the, the Jordan and the uh, uh, the Foundry for my next favourite. Uh, but um, if anything strange and bizarre happens, I will let you know. Otherwise, see you soon.